Welcome to the VMware on AWS update show, the November 2023 edition. On the update show, we bring you up to speed with new releases and features on everything VMware and AWS related. We'll cover jointly engineered services such as VMware Cloud on AWS, which is the fastest and lowest risk path to get your VMware workloads into the AWS Cloud. And we'll be covering additional AWS and VMware services which enhance the VMware Cloud experience, such as VMware Cloud Disaster Recovery, VMware HCX, AWS Backup, and Amazon FSx. Plus, we'll let you know about any recently released blog articles, reference architectures, and customer case studies. Each show will select one or two items from the list of updates, and with our guests, we'll dive into them a little deeper. I'm Chris Porter, and I'm joined by my new co-host, Dries Endert. Dries, do you want to tell us what we've got coming up this month? Sure, Chris. And may I say, what a pleasure it is to be joining the Update Show. On the agenda for today's show, we have the regular round of updates from the world of VMware and AWS. This month, we'll dive deep into HCX+, and we'll cover a recent blog post that outlines integrating VMware Cloud and AWS with Amazon VPC Lattice. Sounds like an exciting agenda. Let's get stuck in. This month, we have updates covering a number of different services. And let's start with VMware Cloud Disaster Recovery. VMware Cloud Disaster Recovery this month has added source protection for VMware Cloud on AWS Outposts that's now generally available. And VMware Cloud Disaster Recovery is also available in Asia Pacific Melbourne and Europe uh, Zurich AWS regions. For VMware Site Recovery, regional availability has been expanded to add support for the AWS Middle East UAE Dubai region, and VMware Site Recovery is now available in 25 global AWS regions. Enhanced recovery plan queuing is also now available. This means that as recovery plans complete, additional plans in the queue will automatically execute in sequence up to a maximum of 10 concurrent plans. Site Recovery REST APIs are now supported through the DR REST plugin for VMware ARIA Automation Orchestrator, and support has also been added into VMware Site Recovery for the new vSAN Express Storage architecture. For other VMware services, VMware Cloud Flex Storage is now available in Europe, Zurich, and Asia Pacific Melbourne AWS regions. VMware Cloud Director Service now offers support for VMware Cloud Director 10.4.2.2, which is a minor release that includes many resolved issues. Moving on to blogs, videos, and customer case studies. In another busy month for AWS blogs covering VMware, we've had three new blogs published in October. The first blog covers landing zone accelerator connectivity with VMware Cloud on AWS, and has been written by Lewis Caron, Simon Valancourt, and Tala Kalim. The second blog is titled How Cock University Used VMware VCDR to Meet Its Disaster Recovery Needs, and is jointly written by Vahap Os from AWS APM partner Comensis and Tuna Esroy from AWS. Last but not least, Sheng Shen has written an article titled Simplify Application Networking with Amazon VPC Lattice and VMware Cloud on AWS. And we'll be joined by Sheng a little later in the show to cover that article in a little more depth. And that covers all of the updates for this month. Earlier this year, VMware announced the initial availability of VMware HCX Plus, and on the update show, we thought this would be a service our audience would like to know a little more about. So joining us today is Gabe Rosas from VMware to help us do just that. Uh, welcome to the show, Gabe. Hey, hey Chris. Uh, yeah, so my name is Gabe. I'm in uh, product management uh, at VMware for HCX. I'm a father of six, uh, love walks on the beach, happy to be on. It's brilliant to have you here, Gabe. Um, so to get started, can you give us an overview of the HX Plus service? Kind of what, what, it, what is this service? Sure. Uh, just so, so kind of like uh, ACX and HX Plus in general are, are, are VMware's best in class uh, workload mobility offerings. Uh, they offer, uh, so in general, ACX uh, broadly offers uh, best in class uh, evacuation, uh, compatible evacuation of legacy sites. It's like a Swiss army knife of migration technologies. And really like we provide um, a means to adopt all of VMware's uh, latest technologies, and then you know uh, VMware Cloud and AWS uh, and, and private data center, specifically with HCX Plus. So uh, specifically with HCX Plus, it's it's a it's kind of like a, a SaaS accessible unified uh, unified experience for for the HCX migration technology, kind of pro providing end to end visibility, uh, simplified onboarding, so like the, uh, our customers can can really get to migrations right away. So like 
you know, uh, the the time to their first migration like drastically goes down with ACX Plus, uh, and we refactored everything. So, so I think what, one of the cool things is that with ACX Plus, uh, we you know, we have this new opportunity to to rebuild the way we've uh, uh, designed our operations. Uh, so we were able to pro- provide like a, a modern like the kind of state of the art experience for my uh, migrations and and mobility um, operations. <laughs> Nice. Gabe, that sounds like a fantastic product. Um, And given that it's in initial availability, are customers using it today? Um, And could you give an example of how HCX Plus is is being used? Sure, sure. So so in the context of of HCX Plus uh, in BIA, uh, that that means that means a restricted uh, uh, sort of a a restricted scope for for the offering. Um, So it's fully, fully supported, uh, but it's available in the United States uh, for, for customers to migrate either on premises or for hybrid cloud deployments to VMware cloud and AWS uh so so th- that's like the the initial scope of of our IA but it's a, it's a fully fully supported offering our, our, the way our customers are using it, so, so like our 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 very first customer um uh they they had a scenario where where they had a, a limited team so 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 they they didn't have a uh, they weren't able to staff a migration team so they were relying on a single uh, vSphere admin to perform you know this this evacuation of their legacy site so so uh, the, the the reason they chose acx plus is because uh you know because of our, our changes and and making it simple for them to adopt it and onboard it and to get going and to meet their aggressive uh, timelines right uh another one of our customers uh, they're using it um, so one of the things that we've changed in ACX Plus is is flexibility uh, for for uh, the kind of environments that are supported, uh, and then uh, so so like for example the the um, uh, the requirements the requirements uh, for for how to how to wire up and what kind of software is required to get things going at their destination environment is is reduced. Uh, so yeah, so, so these these are the kind of customers that that we're that we're seeing today. So cu- customers that that are that are that are able to capitalize on the simplicity of the way we've rebuilt it. Uh, customers with so so a uh, third customer is is a customer with many sites. So they have a, a lot of a it's a consolidation of multiple sites on premises. And ACX Plus uniquely provides like a, a like the, the single console where where you where you can launch uh, your your network uh, connectivity operations and your migrations all in one place. Right? You you could be a you know, at, at the beach and browse to the, to the ACX Plus portal and and get things going. So really, that's that's kind of a we've uh, um, we've re- refactored everything and made it more accessible and really like an easy thing to use uh, for our customers. I really like that idea of kind of simplifying migrations, but also helping with complex migrations as well. So that's some great use cases to talk us through. Uh, really articulates kind of where HCX can help customers. Um, if uh, customers want to get started, um, kind of, ha- what's the setup look like for HCX Plus? You mentioned the deployment is is simplified. If customers are looking to migrate to VMware Cloud and AWS and they want to use HCX Plus with that, yeah. at a high level, kind of, what what are the steps they need to get through? Sure, sure, sure. No, yeah, no problems. So I think the 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 very first thing a customer can do is if if they go to ACX Plus uh, that VMware dot com, they'll be launched into the ACX Plus um, interface. So the, the experience, and you'll see when you get there. Um, the the uh, this portal is 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 backed by VMware Cloud and AWS, so they'll use their VMware Cloud credentials and kind of launch things and get things going. So the way the way the experience uh, uh, starts with ACX Plus is is there, right? So so you, so you you log into the cloud portal, um, you do a, an onboarding for your first site, and and really a, a, anything that's already based in in uh, in VMware and VMware Cloud like a like an SDC is 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 like automatically selected from a dropdown, so they can just you know, click a drop down and say, hey, like this is my SDC where I'm migrating and we'll automatically uh, deploy services. So that, that's, where, that's where they would start. They would start in a, a ACX plus that v, that VMware.com or if they want to just kind of learn generally more about it, they can go to VMware.com uh, slash products slash HCX and, and there's a banner there for ACX plus and they can kind of find the initial info there. All right, great. Well, that sort of answers uh, my question. <laughs> I was going to ask, you know, where they should go if, if, if they want to learn more about the service. Chris, anything you want to add? No, I think um, that's brilliant. It's really great. Uh, it's kind of summary of the service where it helps our customers um, um, migrating to, especially across larger sites. So they've got num- lots of complexity there, um, helping kind of realize that migration into VMI Cloud on AWS. And, sure. and as, as, as Drew says, you've given us some information where our customers and viewers can go to find out more about the service. So uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us, Gabe, today. Yeah, happy to be on. Thank you. 
Recently, AWS released a new blog post titled Simplify Application Networking with Amazon, VPC Lattice, and VMware Cloud on AWS. To dive a little deeper into that post, we're delighted to be joined in the studio by the author of the article, Sheng Cheng. Welcome to the Update Show, Sheng. Glad to be here, Chris. It's awesome to have you in the studio with us. Uh, let's start with a quick warm up. Can you tell the audience um, what is Amazon VPC Lattice? Yeah, sure. So Amazon VPC Lattice is an application layer networking service that um, gives you a simplified and consistent way to connect, secure, and monitor service-to-service -service communications across your AWS environment. Thanks for that explanation. Um, and could you tell us what are the advantages that VPC Lattice brings to our customers? Yeah, sure. Um, so you see, um, modern applications are built with modular and distributed service components. Uh, there's an increasing challenge for our customers to effectively build and connect all their service components together because not every customer has a strong networking uh, expertise, and especially for the developers who should be focusing on building applications, not networks. So VPC Lattice helps developers to easily and quickly build and connect all the service components together while abstracting the underlying network complexity. So the developers, they don't have to learn and manage all the day-to-day -day networking uh, tasks just to get applications up and running. In your blog post, you outline how customers can use Amazon VPC Lattice with VMware Cloud on AWS. Can you just talk us through how that connectivity works between the two services? Yeah, sure. Um, before we get into that, there's a few key concepts we need to understand. So VPC Lattice creates a logical application network. It's called a service network um, that uh, interconnects um, all the uh, applications and the services together across your AWS accounts and VPCs. Within the service network, you can easily build and uh, publish a service for other apps to consume. Now, um, VPC Lattice service supports a variety of compute platforms, including uh, a, a fleet of EC2 instances, or uh, an EKS service, uh, an ECS task, or Lambda function. Or in this particular case, we're talking about some virtual machine workloads running on SDDC. Um, so in order to integrate VPC Lattice with VMware Cloud on AWS, first we need an application load balancer. This is because VPC Lattice uses a unique 169.254 link local address range, which is only accessible within a local VPC and not uh, routable to the external SDDC. So you could build an application load balancer within the connected VPC to terminate the incoming uh, request connection and then route the traffic flow to the VM workloads on the, on, on the SDDC via the high bandwidth low latency SDDC ENI. And then you can uh, create a lattice service using the AOB as the service target. And then finally, you can publish the service onto the service network for other uh, applications to consume. Um, we also support other connectivity models between the application load balancer and the SDDC. This could be done via the VMware Transit Connect, or in this case, a, a, a Transit Gateway intra-region peering, as you're showing on the diagram. So can you provide an example of how uh, customers would be using VPC Lattice, maybe a, a, a use case that you, you talked through a couple in your blog post. So there's one particular yep. one around modernization. Yep. Uh, let's, let's talk through that one. Cool. Um, yeah. So. One interesting use case here is VPC Lattice can help VMware Cloud on AWS customers to seamlessly transform and migrate their existing apps onto cloud native platforms. So let's take a look at this particular example. In this case, a customer is in the process of refactoring one of uh, their legacy applications, which is the one running on the SDC. And they have already built, uh, rebuilt this application uh, into a serverless uh, function using AWS Lambda, which is over there. Now, before they are going to go ahead to cut over the application flow from the legacy app into the Lambda function, they want to uh, conduct a series of canary testing in order to make sure they fully understand all the potential behavior or uh, impact to upstream services. So the good news here is VPC Lattice supports all the common uh, CI-CD deploy uh, deployment patterns, such as blue-green or canary release, exactly the scenario here. Uh, you, can, you can leverage uh, weighted routing to precisely distribute uh, traffic among the two uh, service targets. 
um, and using different routing conditions based on such as um, a request header or, or a pass. By doing this, um, you can reduce risks during a, a application cutover, and which ultimately improve your end user experiences. What's more interesting here is VPC Lattice also helps you to solve a lot of the common networking challenges. Um, so for example, let's say um, if you ha had um, overlapping side block between any of the VPC or SDTC here, previously you would have to build a private net gateway or some sort of third-party appliance to deal with the address translation. Uh, because VPC Lattice used the unique link local address range, it just fundamentally eliminates any of the IP address conflicting issue. Another example could be, let's say, uh, the Lambda function was built inside a third-party provider account. Now, due to security and compliance reasons, you might have to build a, a cross-account private link in order to connect to the Lambda, and you have to keep managing the endpoints. Uh, with VPC Lattice, as you can see here, we don't have to build any of the traditional networking components, not even a VPC peering or transit gateway. So VPC Lattice is, is almost acting as a, tr a transparent proxy to help us quickly uh, connecting all the services together across many different accounts and the VPCs. Thanks. That's a very interesting um, use case. So could you tell us how can our viewers learn more about VPC Lattice and integrating it with VMware Cloud and AWS? Sure. Um, I've included some blog posts um, uh, at the end of the session. And also, there is um, a reinvent the session from last year. I would highly recommend to take a look. Uh, at the time of recording, VPC Lattice was still on the preview. But now the service is fully GA'd since March this year. Oh, and then for anyone who wants to get hands dirty, there's also a CloudFormation sample available on GitHub. I would put a link there. Um, make, sure, make sure to check it out. Within 10, 15 minutes, you could build a fully uh, distributed application stack using EC2, EKS, and Lambda, and all connected using uh, VPC Lattice across many different accounts and VPCs. It's pretty cool. Check it out. Great. Thanks for joining us on the show, Sheng. Thanks for having me. And that wraps up another episode of The Update Show. It's been super fun to talk about all the latest and greatest events from the last month related to VMware and AWS. Thank you ever so much for joining us. Uh, to get more information, Dries, where should our viewers go? You can find more information on the AWS website. Just search for VMware, and we'll have information on all the updates covered in this month's show in the description below. Uh, there'll also be a link in the description that will allow you to get in contact with a representative from AWS. Thank you to the viewers at home for tuning in. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>